there to counter your Pokemon. It's like a perfect play here from Kieran. So Aaron got a lot to do here. We are going to see that lead out, Lou. Win and in time here at day one, Pokemon World Championships on Aaron Trailer's side. You've got the Iron Hands and the Urshifu, and on the opposing side for Kieran, the Clefairy, the friend that is there to help out the Iron Crown. Yeah, a nice play here from Kieran. Got that friend guard, going to support that Iron Crown. The first task, though, is getting around this Urshifu, especially when it's paired up with that Iron Hands. Has got the fake out, so it is going to be disrupting with mm -hmm. that. And then you've got the Unseen Fist ability. Can get through Protect, so you can't quite as freely just go for that Protect here. I mean, the fake out into the Clefairy could be an option. You stop that Follow Me, but then you do open yourself up to potentially taking some big damage from the Iron Crown in return. But is it worth it if you can get maybe a Surgeon Strikes off in to that Pokemon. I was going to say, Clefairy's going to be an annoying Pokemon for Aaron to deal with here, so you might want to get it off the field nice and quick, but it looks like Kieran's been able to do that for you by retreating it in the favor of this Raging Bolt. That's going to have its Protosynthesis activated by the Booster Energy and get a special attack boost, meaning it is one of these more offensive variants. Iron Hands actually goes for the Fake Out into the Iron Crown, stops it in his tracks from going for any damage, allowing the Urshifu to be able to get that on the board with the Surging Strikes. A fantastic switch in. These critical hits are not doing too much at all to the Raging Bolt switch in. Yeah, it's a really nice play here from Aaron, kind of identifying that the Clefairy could be the thing under threat there. So just faking out into the Iron Crown, it's the most threatening offensive thing on Kieran's side of the field and going after that Clefairy smartly with the Surgeon Strikes. Unfortunately for Kieran, makes a very nice play there. Defensive play, bringing the Raging Bolt in, not only getting that booster energy activated, it's really going to threaten that Urshifu this next turn. It resists pretty much most things that the Iron Hands can throw out. And the Iron Crown's in a, a decent position as well to maybe follow up a knockout onto the Urshifu if the double up is into that slot. But Aaron can react to that. He has got two Pokemon in the back and switch it out, maybe save that for a little bit later. Utilize the Iron Hands a little bit more in this position that isn't as threatened, of course. You do need to watch out for that Psychic that the Iron Crown does have access to, and it is holding that Life Orb. So. I mean, we could see a double up into the ocean over here. Something like the Thunderclap and the Psychic would break the Focus Sash and remove it from play. That's why Frigorap is on the field, bringing its ability to make sure that none of this priority can go on the field. So Thunderclap will be null and void if that is what Kieran has gone for. But first of all, we're going to see some beautiful shining on the field in the form of the Terra Stella Urshifu. Like you were saying earlier, Lee, we'll be able to give a boost to the different attacks here on their first usage. Yeah, and here we go. We are going to see that Psychic, a really nice defensive switch here from mm. Aaron. Going to soak up that Psychic, still taking quite a lot of damage for a resisted attack here but all the same we are seeing that stellar terrestrialization on the ocean we're going to get the boost to the surgeon strikes this Ooh. turn it is doing big damage guaranteed critical hits and this third one looks like it probably will be enough to take this big threat down giving Aaron freedom a little bit more now that's gone with that maride on if it is in the back Yes, yeah, really nice to remove that Iron Crown from play and just free up a little bit more flexibility on Aaron's side of the field, as well as getting a nice early KO. The Thunderbolt comes through, though. Urshifu taken right down to its Focus Sash, so in a very vulnerable position going forward. But at least it has the protection of the Frigorap with Armatail to stop the priority oh. coming through. But the Paralysis, that's not able to be stopped here. That not only slows down this Urshifu, but also means that it has the chance to be par paralyzed and not move at all. Yeah, that's really unfortunate for Aaron. Really probably not wanting to see that here where you are now going to be susceptible to getting knocked out by the Raging Bolt. The Paralysis is going to put your speed way, way down there. Furrier after not the fastest thing anyway, so it's not really in a position where, yeah, you can stop that Thunderclap, but uh, Raging Bolt in this position probably doesn't need that, so you're going to have to maybe readjust. Does Aaron switch in something like the Iron Hands here? Yeah, they can soak up those electric attacks a little bit better, and then you can start threatening in the Calyrex as well. Switching around though in front of a, a Calyrex Ice Rider is not the thing that you really want to be doing because you're if you're moving and positioning the, your Pokemon around the board and this Glacial Lance is being continually fired out and you're not doing anything in response to that, it's not going to end very well for you. So I'm sure that Aaron's got that in the back of his mind that he probably wants to sort of try and get some damage off if he can. Of course, the Ferrigarap on the field uh, it does have that foul player that could be a bit more pawned into that Pokemon. Exactly, and we're going to see some adaptations on the field here as well. I think the Frigorath, knowing that it doesn't have the capability here, Iron Hands, as you mentioned, going to be able to take those electric type tacks a little bit better from the Raging Bolt that was there, particularly as it is rocking that Assault Vest, but that does not help you out against a physical attacker like the Calyrex Ice Rider. That is actually going to go for its terrestrialization here, going to be the normal Terra type as well. Very interesting, leaves it susceptible to this Urshifu if it's able to go for something like a close combat. Yeah, the big risk here is I think the Trick Room being set up, but not wanting to go for that. Kirin just going for the damage, wants to remove that Urshifu from the field. Probably a smart thing after going for that normal terrestrialization. Removes that Pokemon, doing some nice damage as well to that Iron Hands. At the same time, 
going to activate that ability, the, the chilling nair boost, going to give you a plus one, the clear amulet as well, it's going to protect that boost and make sure that you can kind of keep that for the rest of the battle, and uh, with the Clefairy out on the field now, the friend god, going to have that kind of extra defensive layer as well to help it get through these next three turns. And the paralysis, I think, really helping out there, lowering that speed to enable that Calyrex Ice Rider to be able to go faster and get the knockout on that Urshifu. You can see the attack being raised thanks to the Protoss and um, the Quark Drive on the Iron Hands here. Um, but as you've mentioned, it's going to be a little bit difficult here to get through this Calyrex. It's already got one Grimnay boost up. It's able to hit both these partner Pokemon, and Maridon does not want to have to take an Ice-type attack. No, it definitely doesn't, and I think that's the big thing here. You've already committed your Terrestrialization to that Urshifu, unfortunately getting par par paralyzed mm -hmm. part of that. So you kind of have to work around some other ways. You do have the Vault Switch, though, where you can go into that, uh, the, the, the Calyrex on the opposite side of the field, get some respectable damage there, but you've got the Clefairy to think about as well, because the Follow Me's there going to protect that Calyrex and kind of free up that Glacial Lance. It's already on plus one. It's making it very difficult for Aaron to kind of get any sort of position. You can get the Frigograph onto the field now. That Psychic, the Electric Seed boost, going to be very important, but can you have enough in the tank to take at least one Glacial Lance and then potentially get that foul play off the next turn? I mean, if you ever needed a defense boost, it was now. It's not going to be enough for Iron Hands. That goes down. But a up, thanks to the Electric Sea Boost, will be able to hang around, but not for much longer, particularly considering Calyrex gets another chilling nay boost. It's going to be in such a formidable spot, and Clefairy is still on the field. We did just see it go for that Follow Me. That's what it does best, and considering Maridon's coming in now as well, it doesn't really have the utility to deal with both the Clefairy and this Calyrex in one turn, it's going to be very difficult for Aaron to come back here, I think. Yeah, I think that that's the problem. The Clefairy being preserved so well by Kirin, even if you could get the foul play off this turn, which you're probably not likely because you're going to go down to a Glacial Lance, it's going to be redirected anyway. And does Maridon have enough in the tank to be able to take down the Clefairy? Questionably, maybe yes, probably with that Electro Drift, but then you've got to outspeed that the, the Calyrex, yeah. and you're not going to be able to do that, unfortunately. And even if you have got the foul play, you've got the, the normal terrestrialization there. So yeah, Kirin doing a, a really nice job here. And with that Raging Bolt in the back still to come in, potentially threaten, close out this game, making it difficult for Aaron, but not over just yet. Yeah, Maridon, um, sorry, the Clefairy just has to go for the follow me, and Maridon only really has single target attacks. It does have the Dazzling Gleam. That's not going to be able to get a KO here. The Electro Dress is really the biggest damage it can deal. It does get the one-hit KO on the opposing Clefairy, but of course the Calyrex Ice Rider is yet to move, and a plus two Glacial Lance is going to be so destructive. We know it'll definitely get the Frigoraph, and Frigoraph able to go for the foul play, though. It is able to move first, but not going to be able to get the knockout. Calyrex getting the Glacial Lance, Pretty sure it's going to be a double KO here, Lee. Yeah, big, big knockout here. And Kieran taking game one. And yeah, like you say, I think that normal terrestrialization is so key here because if you weren't terrestrialized there, I think the foul play coming out with the yes, much more. chilling near boost that you already had would be doing a lot more damage, wouldn't it? So I think quite happy, quite well played there by Kieran. Preserving that Clefairy to the point where it made it very difficult for Aaron to have a way to close out that match with the big kind of powerhouse attacking Pokemon that he had access to. I mean, it has Friend Guard as his ability as well to allow that defensive support to the partner Pokemon. But the one thing I really like about Clefairy is the utility it's able to have at any point in the battle, whether it's using the Helping Hand to draw an attack, um, sorry, the Follow Me to draw an attack, or using the Helping Hand to boost attacks. It has a lot of flexibility depending on what you need it to do in this position. Really, really great play by both trainers. I think it was unfortunate for Aaron to get the Paralysis onto that Urshifu and not enable it to be able to have the speed it needed to use all of its stellar potential and get more damage on the field. You can see here, taken right down to its Focus Sash and the subsequent Paralysis did just mean it was a bit more difficult for Aaron to get his foot back in the match. Yeah, it's, it is a very difficult match when you look at it on paper for Aaron because you bring the Maraid on, I think you have to, if the Iron Crown and the Raging Bolt are coming to the match from Kieran, which is exactly what he did, you have to remove those from the field before you can really bring the Maraid on onto the field, because not only are you activating the Cork Drive onto the Iron Crown, but you're boosting the electric type attacks on the Raging Bolt that's already got a booster energy anyway. So it, it is very tricky. Can you remove those Pokemon? And I think a little bit unfortunate for Aaron in that first game with the Paralysis, if that didn't happen, maybe I think you would be in a lot better position to maybe preserve that for later on to bring back in to deal or better deal with that Calyrex that was so problematic in the end game. I mean, taking a closer look at Aaron's team now, kind of looking into game two, 
Do you think there'll be any adjustments here, Lee? Because I feel like the Maridon, you kind of have to bring. It's your big powerhouse Pokemon, and you can then enable the Electric Terrain to help out something like the Iron Hands if you were bringing it. Frigoraph, I think, is important to stop any potential priority on Kieran's side, because you also still have things like Aqua Jet on Urshifu. We know about the potential Thunderclap that can come through from the Raging Bolt, for example. But do you think there's going to be an adaptation in the other Pokemon? Is Urshifu still going to be a key part here? I feel like Urshifu does give you a lot, the ability to, to really threaten a lot of these Pokemon, right? Especially after you do Terrasilize, you saw the damage it did to the Iron Crown. And with the, the kind of little extra security that you've got with that Focus Sash as well, it means that you've, you've got the ability to get at least one attack off onto one of these big threats, potentially pick up a knockout. The other Pokemon I would say is probably what you want to lean on a little bit more is that Iron Hand to get a bit more out of the Iron Hands than Aaron really got in that first game, because I think with the utility of the fake out there, you really take advantage of that, which he did in that first game. But as an offensive threat, he really wasn't able to get much return there. And I think maybe that is the Pokemon to have on the field if you can. It's awkward though, when you've got a Clefairy on the field from Kieran and how well Kieran played that in game one. Very true, but game two here of Swiss round A at the Pokemon World Championships. We're going to see Aaron Trailer going with the Maridon, setting the Hadron engine out on the field here and enabling it with this Urshifu to apply a lot of offensive pressure straight out of the blocks into Clefairy and Calyrex. Yeah, this is a perfect lead from Aaron, really, because now we know the Electro Drift from game one mm. picks up the knockout into the Clefairy, so it's not as safe. You've got an easy target into that slot with the Electro Drift, and then you can follow up with the close combat or Surgeon Strikes into the Calyrex to get some big damage there. And like we've already mentioned, yes, you might lose your Maridon in that situation, but you could almost scout out the Protect from the Clefairy and just double target into the Calyrex here because is the Clefairy really threatening anything offensively? Probably not anything that you're worried about. So uh, if the Calyrex does protect, it's risky because of the Unseen mm. Fist ability and it can't really freely terrestrialize either. So you've got to go for that follow me with the Clefairy. You pick it up with the Electro Drift and then you can follow it up with that Urshifu. Really great lead here from Aaron. Kieran got a lot to do to kind of get out of this sticky situation. And Maraidon trying to find a way to get around the fact that it's weak to ice type attacks here, going for its Terra Fairy here. We're also going to see some beautiful sparks on the field here as the Bejewel Pokemon on Kieran's side of the field as well is going to be that Clefairy. So we're going to see a Terra Ground, uh, sorry, not Terra, Terrestrialization of Ground type onto Clefairy here. Yeah, and that's the one thing that you don't want to see if you are ironing, clicking in with that Electro Drift here. We are seeing the Fall of Me here. The Surgeon Strike is going to be great into that slot, but are we going to see it? We are going to see Ooh. that Volt Switch. It is going to be blocked. Great terrestrialization here from Kieran, but the Surging Strikes mm. following up Aaron covering bases here, not locking in with that close combat that would have been the most obvious thing. And like you say, is it enough? It Ooh. is enough to get rid of that pesky little Clefairy. Masterful play here by Aaron. Yes, they could have seen that Terra Ground coming, and of course that's going to be detrimental for the Maridon, but urshifu has got its back, being able to deal some very significant damage and remove it from play now means that this Calyrex is going to be a lot more vulnerable going forward without Frengar by its side. As you can see, the Glacial Lance not going to be threatening that Maraidon now that it is Terra Fairy, and Urshifu has had his Focus Sash broken, but it's still very much in the game. Yeah, the, the, the thing here is that the Raging Bolt can come onto the field now for Kieran and, and really threaten the Maraidon. Now it has Terrasilize, you're going to have that booster energy activated, you're going to have the Electric Train boosting that thunderclap and knowing that it's locked in to that Volt Switch, it's an easy thing for you to do. And then maybe because you know it's an easy slot and Aaron's forced to potentially switch that out, you can play into that a little bit more, maybe target that with a Thunderbolt instead of going for the thunderclap. The Urshifu is also really threatened here. But like we can see, Aaron has got that Ferrograph in the back. The Armor Tail can come in. It's going to be really nice at this point as well, where the Calyrex hasn't had that chilling near boost. Yes. So with that electric seed coming in, it can get that boost quite happily, um, block any potential thunderclap coming out, and then get <laughs> some kind of return with whatever Pokemon you decide to leave onto the field. I think as well, if you're Aaron now, you have to be careful not to enable the Calyrex on Kieran's side to start getting those chilling nay boosts because that's when it can start steamrolling through your team. Maraidon going to get out of there knowing that it would be a nuller knockout if a Glacial Lance was able to come its way and Farigarap is able to join the field. Perfect way to prevent a potential Thunderclap coming through and allowing this Urshifu that's in a position where it can still be speedy to get some damage out here on the field. As the defense boost comes up on Farigarap, very, very useful and blocking this Thunderclap. Yeah, really nice block and the close combat top targeted into the Raging Bolt here, doing some nice, respectable damage, taking a little bit of a defense and a special defense drop for its trouble. Glacial Lance coming out, 
going to be not as effective because of that electric seed, but a huge knockout onto that Urshifu critical hit. Would it have been enough even with those defense drops? You're probably saying maybe not. It would have been difficult to tell, but all I can say is Calyrex has got the chilling. They boost one on the board. It's going to be very, very dicey for Aaron here. You do not want to lose another Pokemon and allow this Calyrex to really take over the match. Maridon comes back in, and I think this is a really good position for it to come into because it can apply some good damage. It just depends which move it wants to lock in with because it is choice spec. So whichever move Aaron chooses, you have to stay in with. Something like the Dazzling Gleam could be nice to get the damage across onto the opposing Raging Bolt. Maybe get a little bit of chip onto the Calyrex, but I don't know how Frigoraf is able to finish up against it. So you're going to have to put all your eggs in the basket and channel down against Calyrex if you're me. Yeah, and do you lock in against the Calyrex with that Draco Meteor or do you go for the Dazzling Gleam? It's going to be super effective against the Raging Bolt. Hasn't Trastalized yet. Calyrex hasn't either. And you do have that threat from the foul play as well that now pre terrestrialization is going to hit for super effective damage. Well, that's the thing, Terrestrialization went onto the Clefairy, so it isn't even in the back pocket for Kieran to use here. It is going to be the Dazzling Gleam. Fantastic play here, calling the Protect on the opposing Calyrex here. So it is going to be targeting down into this Dragon type of the Raging Bolt and get the knockout. Yeah, big knockout here, removing that threat. Really nicely played here from Aaron. Having that armor tail on the, the field, kind of denying the fact that the Thunderclap could be a bit of an issue. And then covering bases as well with that foul play into the Calyrex. And quite early, like you mentioned, Terrestrialization has been used up, so that foul play going to do super effective damage into that slot. One more Pokemon, though, for Aaron to deal with is this Urshifu on Kieran's side of the field, and I believe it also has got yeah. that Focus Sash. So you're going to have to really commit into this Pokemon twice to be able to remove it from the field, and have you got enough in the tank to be able to take at least one attack from it in the meantime? This is the thing. Frigoraf with the foul play should be able to get a huge amount of damage onto that opposing Calyrex Ice Rider, and thanks to the Electric Seed defense boost, might be able to take another one the Glacial Lancer, so you have that potential to work with. The issue is the speed of this Urshifu, because it's able to come through, clean up, and also go through any potential Protect Frigograph might want to do to avoid a Glacial Lance. So it really comes down to Maraidon here. It's able to go for a Dazzling Gleam. That will take the Urshifu down to its Focus Sash, but not do too much to the opposing Calyrex. Yeah, and Aaron does still have a Pokemon in the back as well, so taking that Urshifu down to its Sash, but like you mentioned, it, something on Aaron's side of the field is going to have to take some big damage here. Mm -hmm. And it is going to be that Frogograph. It is going to be the close combat, taking it probably into what will be Glacial Lance range here for Kieran to take maybe a double knockout. Oh, but the Frogograph is able to move first, able to get the KO. Calyrex is down and out of here. You do not have to worry about Glacial Lance. Yeah, really nice turn here for Aaron. Picking up on the speed ties from that game one, the Frogograph outspeeding that Calyrex quite confident in being able to say, okay, well, whatever comes out, I lose the Maridon potentially to a close combat, or Ferrigraph, it has had its electric seed boost, so it's got a bit more of a bolster to its defense. It's gonna be able to soak that up quite easily like we just saw it do, and then return with that foul play, and because the terrestrialization wasn't a thing here that is doing super effective damage, especially with the chilling nair boost that has had, kind of falling in your favor a bit to allow you to close things out. And now it is the lone Sash Urshifu <laughs> against three Pokemon on Aaron's side of the field. This is exactly what Aaron needs to be able to pull into a game three. Maraidon able to shine brightly and go for a Dazzling Gleam to take the score 1-1 going into the final game of the set. The winning in, does it get more exciting than this, Lee? No, going right down to a game three and really well played here from Aaron. And what is a very difficult matchup, I think the way that he was very brave in that, that first turn, when we were just talking about how hard it is to bring that Maraid onto this match, but saying, no, actually, I need the damage. Mm -hmm. Identifying that from game one, how much it threatens that Clefairy. It's probably the only thing that you've got to be able to remove that Pokemon from the field in one hit. So let's bring it and let's bring something next to it, like the Urshifu. Mm -hmm. We saw how much that pressured the, the, the Calyrex Ice Rider. And it almost in that situation as well, ate up that Terrestrialization, which was so useful for that late game. Kirin had to commit to that. Uh, ground Terrestrialization, oh, yeah. and you don't mind going for potentially a Volt Switch into it, especially if the Calyrex isn't really doing much that turn anyway. But I honestly think Aaron was in so much command this whole game right from the beginning, even with that Clefairy thinking, yes, it could go for the Ground Terror, and if it does, well, that's tough for my Maraidon. But covering it so beautifully with the Urshifu just meant that he was constantly making Kieran have to adapt to his style here. Yes, we even had the critical hit come through on that Urshifu later in the game, but being able to have the Terrestrialization on the Maraidon, boosting up this Dazzling game so it could deal a huge amount of damage to the Urshifu and actually significant to the Calyrex to ensure the KO with the foul play does just show how in command he was in this game too. Yeah, and I think that that speed 
kind of tearing there between the Ferrigera and the Calorex. It's It makes such a difference there because if your Ferrigera is slow for whatever reason, if it's maybe on Kirin's side a faster Calorex, then things get a little bit more complicated. And you wouldn't say it's out of the realms of possibility looking at the team. There's not really yep. any sort of trick room anywhere on Kirin's side of the field. Um, so I think going down a similar sort of line is what Aaron did in that first game is probably the right thing to do here and it's it's all for Kieran to adjust now. Does he go down the route with that cornerstone Ogapon where you do have that sturdy ability where you can almost guarantee taking two attacks to allow something like maybe your Iron Crown to come back into play, utilize that terrestrialization. Because I think if you are looking at it from an offensive perspective, yeah, it's great, like, terrestrializing your Clefairy, but you're not really getting any offensive benefit there. And we saw how offensive Kieran's place that was in that first game. I think he really needs to revert back to that and stop putting pressure onto Aaron, which Aaron was so well at dealing with in that game, too. So coming right down to the wire here, we're going into yeah. game three. The decider who, which one of these amazing players will be advancing in to day two here, the 2024 World Championships. And it's gonna be the dynamic duo once again of Urshifu and the Maraidon versus down against the Teferi and the Calyrex Ice Rider. Now we saw in game two how in control Aaron was of this turn one. Had one engine on the field, setting that electric terrain. The key thing here is going to be what is this Clefairy going to do? What support is it going to be providing? And is it going to allow Calyrex to shine? Yeah, and that's the thing. And I think, it, are you going to commit to that terrestrialization once again? We just talked about that. I don't think you do this time around. I think you probably allow the Clefairy to go down, if anything. You've got the Friend Guard. You've got the Follow Me. You can definitely pull in two attacks. But the problem is, if you do see that Maridon lock into the Electro Drift and not the Volt Switch, if you don't terrestrialize, you are going to lose your Clefairy and probably take a lot of damage for your trouble with the Calyrex, maybe putting you too far behind this battle. So it's very risky not going for that. Well, this was the winning combination for Aaron in that game too, terrestrializing up the Maraidon, dropping its weakness to Ice-type attacks and allowing Dazzling Gleam to be even more formidable. Clefairy not terrestrializing this time, going for the Follow Me as Maraidon goes for the Electro Drift. Not seeing the Ground Terror here, going to be able to do huge damage. One hit KO, Clefairy is out of this championship. Yeah, the castles are crumbling here and Aaron taking a huge lead in this turn one, following up with these Surgeon Strikes into the Calyrex. Kieran not committing to that terrestrialization and really costing him here. The Glacier Lance, probably the option here. Maybe a trick room though, but the terrestrialization on that Maraidon taking away the ice weakness. So going to be able to cushion it up nice and safely. Focus Ash on the Urshifu as well. Not taking much damage from it in a commanding position. If the turn one of game two was perfect, this was sublime. Being able to not only get the knockout on that Clefairy once again, but some damage on the board against this Calyrex does put Aaron into a great position. You have to talk about the Iron Crown. However, it's come onto the field and been able to benefit from that electric terrain. Yeah, and it is getting the speed boost. I think that's the thing to note here. It's going to get the jump on the Mariah. I'm going to be able to attack that before it can move. It's got the Tachyon Cutter Steel type attack. It's going to do super effective damage into that Pokemon. And you can also choose to go for a Psychic into the Urshifu. The Sash has been broken there. So you've got your, your choice here. I mean, the easy one is going for the Maridon. You know it's choice locked. It hasn't got Protect. The Urshifu has got Protect. So it can easily just kind of get around any threat this turn. Do you want to lose your Maridon? That's, a that's the question. Or could you switch it out for something else? Looks like it's staying in play for now. Urshifu going defensive with the Detect as Iron Crown went for the Psychic. Fantastic defensive play by Aaron here, calling this perfectly from the Iron Crown, enabling the Maridon to get the edge, go for the Electro Drift, down into the supposing Calyrex, and with so much damage on the board, able to get the knockout. That is a huge knockout once again. A really great play here from Aaron, identifying that probably the Maridon was the thing at threat here, but not breaking he's uh, just going the pressure here and committing to getting rid of that big restricted threat on Kieran's side of the field and now the raging ball the other thing that's going to take advantage from this electric train getting that booster energy activated boosting that special attack You've got the iron crown still a threat here so you can't really take anything for granted but you do have two pokemon in the back if you're iron maybe you switch in something like the iron hands although it is risky if you switch it in on a Psychic, you're going to take a lot of damage for it. But the Iron Hands is a great Pokemon to be able to bring into this situation because if you get it right, land on something like the Raging Ball, throwing out a Thunderbolt, you're going to be able to soak that up so well, right? 
Exactly. It's so interesting now where the state of play is because this Iron Crown is so fast on the field as well. But you have to watch out for that Raging Bolt as well. It has the potential to go for a Thunderclap. But if Aaron has that Frigoraph in the back and brings it in, that can be so detrimental for Kieran. And it is not going to be scared going for the Thunderclap. Not even thinking, hey, Frigoraph could switch in here. The Bold and Brave play in game three is necessary to get the knockout. Not only does that get the priority, but now the Iron Crown can go for that Psychic thanks to its speed and get the KO on the Urshifu. Yeah, it's a really nice play here. And it may be one that Aaron's just thinking, okay, I've got two Pokemon in the back. I don't want to take any risks. I don't want to switch anything in. Two Pokemon I got out, probably going to get knocked out. That's fine. I've got a game plan. We've got the Furograph and the Iron Hands in the back. You can bring them in a much more healthy position. You're going to get that Psychic Seed activated. Mm -hmm. Not really going to be that helpful in this situation, unfortunately. You do have the Fake Out from the Iron Hands, of course. That's going to at least give you one turn. But... Could Kieran's Pokemon just protect here? And mm. the Iron Hand's going to be threatened by the Psychic. The Raging Bolt going to threaten the Frigoraph with that Thunderbolt. It's it's looking pretty tough here for Aaron, but Honestly, not over. Honestly, with that one turn, the momentum has completely swung into Kieran's favor. It's heartbreak to see as well the Frigoraph that was indeed in the back. Aaron could have brought it in, but based on the way he played games one and two, I think his play style enough would have been such a threat, but Kieran actually just completely going through that masterful play. And now once again, you have this Iron Crown in the position where it can go for just something like a Psychic, get some damage down on the board. And I believe as well, Kieran still has Terrestrialization or am I making that up? Still has Terrestrialization. I think it's still in play, right? Has not committed to it, because didn't go for it on the Clefairy. Mm -hmm. The Clefairy went down to the Electro Drift and then the Calyrex took a lot of damage that turn from well, there the we go. And here's our answer, Lou. Kieran yeah. locking in with the Terrestrialization now, and it is onto that Raging Bolt. Yep. So we will see this Paradox Pokemon turn into a, an Electric type, boosting further those big damaging attacks. Yeah, not for this turn though. Fake Out comes through, gonna slow it down in its tracks as the Tachyon Cutter comes through from Iron Crown. This is gonna be able to connect a couple of times here into the Frigger up, and it's not gonna be able to hang on to another one of those in the following turn. Life or Brute Core coming through as well as Raging Bolt, not able to move. Frigger up, however, taking advantage of the speed on the opposing side and switching things up with a Trick Room. I like this here from Aaron. You still can kind of get around any priority thanks to the ability on the Frigger up, but does Iron Hands have enough to be able to get two knockouts here. You've probably got enough to get the Iron Crown if you double up into it, because mm. is the foul player going to be enough to pick up the knockout onto it? Maybe not. Maybe, though. It's going to be very close. The Raging Bolt's a different question, though. Do you have enough with the Iron Hands to deal with the Raging Bolt, especially after it has Terrestrialized, after it has had this booster energy boost, after the Electric Terrain is still active on the field? I don't know if you're going to be able to really remove it so easily, but here we go. Aaron going all in with a helping hand. Yeah, let's see if it can do it. You have to call the, the Protect correctly. Iron Crown is going to be protecting if Aaron has talked it down into this. And he has the low kick goes oh. down. It's gone. Raging Bolt falls down. It's a tall Pokemon. It weighs a lot. The low kick is going to be detrimental to it. And it is down and out here in this match. That is a huge turn from Aaron, identifying that the Raging Bolt is the big threat here because the Iron Crown is in that position where it's a little bit awkward, right? You've got the Trustalization locked in on the Raging Bolt. So you think, let's take advantage of that. The Furograph's Armor Tail blocking the Thunderclap, taking full advantage of the Helping Hand, the low kick. Not something that we commonly see. Yes. Really great choice here from Aaron based on the weight of the Pokemon. And because Raging Bolt is a heavy Pokemon, Aaron Trailer has won and will be progressing into day two of the World Championships here in Hawaii.